Hello again everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Okami. So we've opened the spirit gate. And what's inside? Well we're about to find out. I like how he's essentially playing the victim. And yeah, somehow Oki has made it into the forest as well. Oh, how nice that you just invited yourself. Maybe we don't want tag alongs. Yeah, how did you get around that anyway? Oh right, the sword. Well, it's nice to know that apparently Katone can prevent you from going entirely berserk and losing your way in the forest. Maybe I should have taken that sword instead. As we can see, Oki is a complete obsessive compulsive about getting the sword to glow no matter what, and he honestly believes that going through the spirit gate is going to, well, solve his problem. He certainly got the guts, but is he right? Well, that's debatable. Well, it's nice to know he's batshit insane. Amy's not going to take any time waiting to join into the fray, obviously. <laughs> yeah, I've seen this somewhere before, actually. Yeah, that village. But something doesn't seem quite right. Like, this tiny little sapling. What's going on with that? Isn't this where the sacred tree is supposed to be? Now, this always cracks me up. Yeah, and you apparently have a speech impediment that you're going to grow out of. But aren't you a cute little kid? I love how he, he's just completely disregarding what she's saying. Oh, 
Okay, sounds good. Especially since in the future you're gonna kinda resurrect us, but hey. No wait, did I say that? Well, you probably already garnered that we've obviously entered the past. Now, exactly when in the past? Well, a hundred years ago into the past. So as you can see, here are the sisters who grew the guardian, uh, guardian saplings. And because this is back in the day, the power of the gods was greater, so pretty much everyone can see the markings on Amy's back. But of course this leads to a question. Depending on how much you know about the original story of Orochi, you might wonder just exactly how are the villagers going to react to this because, as I recall, they didn't think she was a friend. It's nice to know that Easton has no clue what's going on, even though the average person would probably have figured out by now just exactly what's happening. I don't think this old man can beat us up, but he obviously doesn't like us much. Also, he's not Mr. Orange. He's actually Mr. Grapefruit, but that's besides the point. <laughs> Either way, he doesn't like us and he doesn't want to talk to us because he believes that we are here to decide who the sacrifice for Orochi is going to be, since that is what the legend told. Originally, Shiranui was not believed to be good in any way, shape, or form. She was actually thought to be a demon, essentially a familiar for Orochi. Now, of course, Easton has absolutely no friggin' clue what's going on, like, he truly believes that we're still in the present. So, anytime anybody says anything, he thinks that they've gone utterly insane. And the other thing is, there really isn't much to this area. It's relatively small, actually, but... You know, it's interesting to see the village back in the day.
Well, next time on Let's Play Okami, we will continue to explore the village. Sadly, we don't have enough time to do the rest of it. But, we'll find out what's going on. So, I'll see you all next time. Sayonara.